So today I'm gonna be explaining an article that uh, needs you to know about uh, this course representation structure before uh, learning that. So this beautiful article again by Mirella and it uses a direct acyclic graph. You know, because in this course representation structure, sometimes you have uh, uh, a graph that is that is a tree, but it is a cyclic tree. So there is no cycle in that. It's a tree, but it is no. There is no cycle. So this this does not hold. So there is no cycle. And they use recurring neural network. Uh, grammars so they are working with the graph prediction problem so semantic parses are directed a cyclic graphs so semantic parsing should be modeled as graph prediction but you know linearizing them always does not work because uh, because it it uh, the result may not be a reasonable graph and uh, you will see what I mean so there are six different formalism in semantic parsing lambda calculus dependency based compositional semantics by Percy Leung frame semantics uh, frame semantics which is uh, really in, uh, useful uh, when somebody is uh, uh, has a knowledge of linguistics and is originally uh, is, is, it comes from linguistics departments from their motivations and there is another thing abstract meaning representation and also meaning minimal recursion semantics but uh, the formalism that uh, I will explain I will be explaining in this article is discourse representation theory or this DRS discourse representation structure like this. It's a discourse representation structure. Uh, so because in, in our, our human mind, cognitive scientists believe that it's like in embodiment. First of all, you should think that somebody, something happens, something goes, something uh, happens and it uh, the language has embodiment so their motivation comes from that uh, and so for example every ship in the dock needs a big anchor so we can so th in this example every ship in the dock needs a big anchor you can represent it by some boxes for example, box one, box three, box two, but box two results implies box three, and box four is independent of box one. So here you see there are two paths, but it is a acyclic graph, although it's a direct acyclic graph, and so there is no cycle in here, but it is graph. So they use penman notation. We can use this penman notation, and uh, for example, uh, for AMR graph, here you see that there is a DAG directly cyclic. There is there is no cycle in here, uh, and the pen penman formulation, the format of that. And here is a, a is an other example that shows uh, how this uh, uh, this uh, creates a DAG, direct acyclic graph. But there are pros and cons for linearization graph linearization that is very common in parsing literature. But the graph bank data sets usually already contain linearizations which can be used without additional work. And we can use simple, well-understood sequence models to model them. But the problem is, consequ sequence models can predict strings 
that don't correspond to graphs. For example, strings with ill-formed bracketing or unbound variable names. While it is often possible to fix these strings with puree or post-processing, we would prefer to model the problem in a way that does not require this. So the problem is model that predicts graphs are complex and far less well understood than models that predict sequences. And fundamentally, this is because predicting graph is difficult. And every graph has many possible linearizations. So from a probabilistic perspective, the linearization is a latent variable that must be marginalized out. And there is a solution to that, the model that predicts the sequence through a simple string rewriting process and we will see that we can see as a, some fragments that we encapsulate something. We encapsulate so that if we make mistakes in, in the middle of the parsing, in the middle of the learning process, uh, uh, it doesn't bother us from, from the learning. It doesn't make a big uh, problem. And so grammar productions are in normal form in that F has a single edge. Uh, and the restricted DAG grammar should, should satisfy these, these conditions. So for example, we have some actions. Actions could be gen label, gen fragment, uh, and gen fragment start and then gen label. Uh, so there are some production rules, just like, so we are generalizing everything we do in grammar, but this is, this is a kind of, this is a new kind, uh, this is a new grammar that uh, is, but because we are using discourse representation structure, it is, uh, uh, the, the result is, looks different because it's a different formalism. But we all, we, we all, we just need these actions. So again, just like any other grammar, we define a set of terminal symbols and also non-terminal symbols. Uh, and these are production rules. For example, T0 becomes, uh, becomes this, so linearizing this or different parts of that box that I showed you in the beginning of this lecture. So these are some productions. And for example, we say T0 is the start symbol, I is, a, is its rank, and we say L has rank zero. And uh, I hope you are familiar with these uh, discourse representation structure. So these are just some rules, production rules. So we the, we model that with neural net realizer, a model that uh, we have two types of action, gen fragment and gen label. And also we have a reduce action, just like shift reduce paradigm, we have different actions. Here we have different set of actions. So a third reduce action is applied whenever, like this, whenever a subtree is completed. Now we go there, for example, shift, and then you reduce, reduce here, reduce here. And you know, these uh, actions are independent. We multiply them just like uh, what you do in shift reduce or any, any other uh, method that we've talked. And so we represent it, the encoder is like this, we use 10 edge activation. And the word embeddings, WI is the word embedding. We also use the part of speech embedding, uh, the UI. And the gen fragment uh, uh, just we just predict, we obtain CTVU soft attention, 
so all of these are uh, standard and we use stack LSTM representation. I've explained stack LSTM, which is a generalization of LSTM. You know, it's, it's LSTM, but uh, you have a stack. It means that when you push, uh, the header is here. For example, you pop, uh, it goes to different uh, points. For example, the header is now here. It means that you 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 just uh, use the, this hidden representation instead of uh, different uh, steps. So it depends on push and pop. You use different uh, uh, different uh, stages, different. Uh, indices of these uh, hidden representations for example h1 h2 h3 depending on push and pop you you look at different uh, places in order to take advantages of of these hidden states and also gen label it it is for label l can be written to either semantic constants for example speaker now or hearer or unary predicates that often correspond to lemmas. And we model, uh, we model the selection, uh, assigning each input lemma a score that we, can, we then pass through a softmax layer. And the reduce is the same, uh, we use LSDM. And uh, so the loss is just the entropy loss over the sequence of gold actions and also this is a, another good article